Welcome to the 2023 CompTIA A Plus Hardware and Network Troubleshooting Practice Test. This test has 20 questions with explained answers that will help you for this section of the test. Before we get started, don't forget to zap that like button to see more videos like this. Now here's your CompTIA instructor to walk you through these questions. Question 1. Bob has had his computer for a while and was just bragging to his friends about how reliable it was. The next morning he goes to power on his computer and nothing happens. He checks and makes sure all the cords are plugged in, but still no luck. What could be the issue? A. Not enough memory to turn on. B. An unexpected shutdown. C. No power. D. Overheating. The correct answer is C. No power. A computer with no power will not turn on. This could be caused by issues with the power supply inside the computer case or issues with power coming from the outlet. Even if the cord is plugged in, either of these locations could be lacking in power. Thus, there would be no transfer of power. Question 2. Tim is an avid gamer and spends countless hours on his computer playing the latest installment of World of Warcraft. Wow. During this particular session, he has been playing for an unprecedented stretch of 36 hours straight. Suddenly, he gets a whiff of a burning smell coming from his computer and immediately shuts it down. What could the problem be? A. Bad video card driver. B. Burned out hardware. C. Flashed BIOS. D. System lockup. The correct answer is B. Burned out hardware. Burning smells usually indicate hardware that has burned out or a bad capacitor. To protect other components of your computer from potential damage, it is best to completely power off your machine until you can investigate the cause. Question 3. Tiffany is enjoying some downtime on her new desktop computer when suddenly her computer powers off. She checks to make sure the power cords are still in place and she finds that they are. She thinks she should check the power supply in her computer, but her parents tell her that the power outlet she's using has always caused issues. What device could she use to check the voltages of both? A. Millimeter B. Electrode tester C. USB tester D. Power Supply Tester. The correct answer is A. Millimeter. A multimeter would be able to check voltage readings from both the power outlet and power supply. This would help narrow down the source of any power issues. A power supply tester intended use is strictly to test the power supply unit. Question 4. John is a data scientist and consistently plays around with large data files on his desktop computer. While trying to pull up one extremely large file, John begins to hear a very loud clicking noise. What could this possibly indicate? A. Disconnected network connection. B. Read-write head that needs cleaning. C. Faulty hard drive cables. D. Mechanical drive failure. The correct answer is D. Mechanical drive failure. Typical hard drives consist of several moving parts required to read and write data. Loud clicking noises usually indicate one of these components inside the drive has failed. Constantly having to read extremely large files could potentially accelerate hard drive failure. Question 5. Mike loves music and has recently borrowed a USB drive from his friend to copy over a new album. He leaves the USB drive inserted into the computer and shuts it down for the night after he is finished. The next day, he goes to boot up his machine, and it displays a message saying, OS not found. What could be the problem? A. Corrupted music file. B. The OS not found virus. C. Incorrect boot sequence. D. Bad RAM. The correct answer is C. Incorrect boot sequence. The computer sets up the OS boot sequence in the BIOS. It lists the order in which it will look for an operating system. If the USB drive is listed in a higher priority, it will check there first for the system files. If none are found, or if they are corrupted, it may display this message. Question 6. After coming into work early to assist on a project, Tim finds that his computer monitor shows no image on the screen after turning it on. He checks and confirms that he is getting power to both the computer and monitor, so that shouldn't be an issue. What could be wrong with Tim's display? A. The VGA connection was not seated completely. B. The wireless was turned off by accident. 
C. The monitor Ethernet cable became disconnected. D. The computer is busy performing a defrag. The correct answer is A. The VGA connection was not seated completely. The most common reasons for images not showing on the screen are generally cabling issues. Example, something is unplugged or not fully connected. These display cables are typically either VGA, DVI, DisplayPort, or HDMI. Question 7. Jessica is interning at the IT help desk and your boss assigned you to mentor her and provide senior leadership while he is away on vacation. She receives a call from one of the executives who says her laptop screen is appearing really dim and that she can't remember making any changes. Jessica asks for your advice. What could be the cause of this issue? A. The video cable is connected to the wrong port. B. The laptop is in power saving mode. C. The executive's IP address changed, causing erratic behavior. D. The wireless signal is affecting the display brightness. The correct answer is B. The laptop is in power saving mode. Common issues with dim screens actually have little to do with faulty hardware. It is usually caused by the brightness settings being reset or modified on the display itself or on the video card. Another common case with laptops specifically is that power saving mode can be triggered when the battery life drops below a certain threshold. Question 8. Several staff members in the customer service department at your technology company are complaining they cannot access the internet. Upon closer inspection, you learn that all these employees are getting an IP address beginning with 169.254. Why can't these employees access the Internet? A. DNS misconfiguration issue. B. Using an AP IPA address. C. Weak wireless signal. D. DHCP server is online. The correct answer is B. Using an AP IPA address. An AP IPA address is automatically assigned to your computer. <laughs> An AP IPA address is automatically assigned when your computer cannot reach the DHCP server, even if it is configured for DHCP. This will allow temporary local connectivity, but will not allow access to any router or to the Internet. If this question is still confusing, please consider this additional explanation. You have to think about this one very logically to arrive at the correct answer. The question asks directly, why can't you access the Internet? The Internet doesn't care about the DHCP server or if it is offline. It just needs to know you have a valid IP address for surfing. A 169.254 is an automatic invalid IP address for Internet communication, so it would drop the traffic likely before it even left the building. And even if it didn't, your service provider would drop it once it tried to get on their network. So the direct answer is because you have an AP IPA address. Now, if the question asked, why do they have 169.254 IP addresses? Then the answer could be because the DHCP server is offline. There are ways you can still access the Internet even without DHCP, but that's a little more advanced topic. Question 9. Peter had a long day at work and plans to just watch Netflix movies for the rest of the night when he gets home. After turning on his tablet, he notices that it is not connecting to his wireless access point. He double-checks and confirms that his access point is not showing up in the list of available connections. What could be the issue? A. Offline access point. B. An IP address conflict. C. Internet is down. D. SSID is enabled. The correct answer is A. Offline access point. Typically, in a home environment, if your SSID is not showing up in the list of connections, it could mean that it's offline or unplugged. If this were to happen in a business environment, it may be that the SSID was disabled by the administrator. Question 10. Sam is a junior network engineer at your company and has been asked to troubleshoot an issue for a client who is using Windows. While remotely troubleshooting, Sam wants to check the client's IP configuration for issues. What command can Sam tell the client to use 
to find this information. A. IP config. B. NS lookup. C. Root print. D. IP config and flush DNS. A. IP config. B. NS lookup. C. Root print. A. IP config. B. NS lookup. C. Route print. D. IP config slash flush DNS. The correct answer is A. IP config. The IP config command will display information about your assigned IP address, among other network related parameters. Along with ping and trace RT, these are among the most common used Windows commands in troubleshooting networks. Question 11 Ken is at the office enjoying some Netflix time while on a break, when suddenly the sound stops coming out of his new speakers. Before he checks on anything, he contacts you at the IT help desk by phone. What is the first thing you should tell Ken to check? A. Check the video card drivers. B. Check for any recent automatic updates. C. Check to see if anything is unplugged. D. Check the sound card drivers. The correct answer is C. Check to see if anything is unplugged. When troubleshooting any kind of issue, you always want to start with the physical layer issues first, such as cabling unplugged, disconnected, or cut. This saves you a lot of time from troubleshooting more complex scenarios when the issue could have been someone tripped over the power cord and it came out of the socket. Refer to the OSI model for troubleshooting methodology. Question 12. A customer has come to you for help with his mobile phone battery. Question 12. A customer has come to you for help with his mobile phone battery. Earlier in the day, the customer noticed that the back of the device was bulging out and opened the case to find that the battery was swollen. What can cause batteries to swell? A. Firmware issue. B. Not fully charged. C. No cellular signal. D. Overheating. The correct answer is D. Overheating. Possible reasons for swollen batteries include overheating, overcharging, and just failed due to old age. This is a problem with all lithium-ion batteries and the battery housing actually swells as a safety measure to contain the hazardous materials inside. Question 13. Your computer vendor is scheduled to stop by the office tomorrow morning to complete her six-month maintenance on the new printer you recently purchased. Your boss has looked over the list of steps she plans to complete and is wondering how she will accomplish removing the toner dust from the printer. Which tool will the vendor use to accomplish this task? A. Toner Probe B. Toner Vacuum C. Toner Spooler D. Toner Suction Kit The correct answer is B. Toner Vacuum The Toner Vacuum is a specialized piece of equipment used to remove toner dust from inside your printer. It is also anti-static, so it won't damage any other of the sensitive components inside the printer. Question 14. Your company is starting to grow and your CIO asks you to set up an extra printer solely for the executives to use. You grab an old printer out of the storage closet in the back, but it is filled with dust from sitting for so long. What common item could be used to clean the dust off the old printer? A. High pressure capacitor B. Compressor C. Computer fan D. Compressed air The correct answer is D. Compressed air Compressed air can be used to clean out dust and particles inside printers and computers. This typically comes packaged in an aluminum bottle. It's best to use in an open area or out of doors. Question 15. Your printer technician is troubleshooting the main company printer, and he could use your help. He says that all of the parts appear to be in good shape, and he can't see any mechanical reason why the printer isn't working. He asks you if you can restart the print service that manages the printing in the background. What is the name of this service? A. Maintenance Services B. Windows Printing Services C. Print Spooler D. WinPrint The correct answer is C. Print Spooler The Print Spooler service is the part of the operating system that manages the majority of print-related tasks. This is usually the main communications mechanism for sending print jobs from a computer to a printer. Question 16. 
After getting home from the office, you decide to play around with your computer settings before dinner to help prepare you for the new CompTIA a exam. While inside the BIOS, you notice that date and time settings are all wrong, even though you just set them last night. This points to an issue with what component? A. Alkaline battery B. CMOS battery C. Corrupted hard drive D. Bad operating system the correct answer is B, CMOS battery. Incorrect BIOS date and time settings usually point to an issue with the CMOS battery. This is used to keep the settings intact within the BIOS, even when the PC loses power after you shut it down. Question 17. You've been assigned by your boss to work with the firewall administrator at your company on a new project. As a part of the new security policy changes, your company will be getting new firewalls capable of supporting the new goals of the organization. The firewall administrator asks if you can help him find the public IP address of one of your biggest customers' websites, as the customer doesn't allow access to the web server. Which command line tool would you use to find this information? A. Flush DNS. B. IF Config. C. NS Lookup. D. Conf T. The correct answer is C. NS Lookup. The NS Lookup command is used to query DNS servers about the name or IP address of a public device. You would simply enter the name of the customer's website, example, www.thepicklecompany.com, and the public IP address value will be returned. Question 18. Which failure will not result in a no operating system error? A. RAM failure. B. Boot sequence misconfiguration. C. Hard disk failure. D. Hard disk cable disconnected. The correct answer is A. RAM failure. A RAM failure would usually result in a computer not starting at all or presenting a BIOS error before an attempt to boot an operating system. Only after the RAM test, the computer will look for the OS boot configuration. If the hard disk is not functioning properly or not configured in BIOS in the correct sequence, the no operating system error would be shown. Question 19. The email client on a user's PC fails to send or receive new messages to an external user. What would be the most likely cause of this issue? A. A. Wrong message encoding. B. Misconfigured web interface. C. Insufficient file permissions. D. The computer is not connected to the Internet. The correct answer is D. The computer is not connected to the Internet. Email servers can be located either inside the local network or with the advent of cloud services like Office 365 and Google Workspace, formerly G Suite, increasingly more and more on the outside of your network. Regardless of where the email server is located, an internet connection is necessary for the client to successfully send messages to an external recipient and for an external recipient to successfully receive messages from the sender. Question 20. You have been using your laptop to troubleshoot a network issue in a separate office. When you came back to your desk, the laptop cannot connect to the internet and you're receiving an IP conflict error message. What may be the cause of these issues? A. The laptop has a disk drive formatting issue. B. The laptop has a driver issue. C. The laptop doesn't have a network cable connected. D. The laptop has an IP address configured manually. The correct answer is D. The laptop has an IP address configured manually. An IP conflict is caused by connecting a device with statically configured IP address to a network where this address has been already configured or assigned to another device. Sometimes configuring an IP address may be a step in troubleshooting network issues. When moving a computer to another network, the IP configuration needs to be matching the network. A unique IP address needs to be configured or the IP needs to be assigned by a DHCP server. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you still need more practice, check out these videos. And if you don't mind subscribing, that would help our channel a lot. Thank you so much.